Hello, this is Walter Smith on Blooming Rising TV, back for another week of Walter's Glass Half Full. So without further ado, hey, let's have a look at some of those comments. Ben Kelly, really quite sad seeing Pella's go. Proper gentleman and a class act. Best of luck, Manuel, and thanks. But roll on, the pep era. Now that's sort to get me excited. I'm gonna take a little look at Pellegrini's time at the club. And if you look, when Pellegrini actually stepped in, the squad was almost self-imploding. If you don't believe me, remember that Wigan Cup final. Ooh. Now don't get me wrong, Pellegrini, <laughs> he did have his flaws. His inability to actually change a game in the first half. But prime example of that was when we played Liverpool at home. Ooh. His ability to actually pour the pants off the most enthusiastic journalist or even fan. His inability to actually properly set up a defence or even provide cover when that defence was struggling in midfield. And overall, I would argue that he never actually got the British mentality of passion. My take on Pellegrini's time at Manchester City, it's almost been at a long lost relative's funeral who you haven't seen in years. To go over the negatives at this point would be just churlish. I believe in years to come when we actually look back at Manuel Pellegrini's time at Manchester City, he's going to be thought well of, to be honest. If I look at some of the positives on Manuel Pellegrini's era at Manchester City, oh, my favourite got to be when we chased down a rampant Liverpool side and put them to the sword. The image of those heartbroken scousers with their champions t-shirt and singing their chant of, we're going to win the league, Manuel properly mugged them right off. To top it all off that season, we scored about, well, a gazillion goals, made it through to the knockout stages of the Champions League for the first time, and a bit of silverware in the League Cup. Some would argue we could have kicked on that year, but we were hampered by FFP. This season, we've actually managed to get to a semi-final of the Champions League. On top of that, we've also managed to win the group stage for the first time. He put some silverware on our shelf in the form of a League Cup. Pellegrini, he did all right this season. I hear today for the first time that Pellegrini is the first manager at City to actually finish above United every season he was here. That can't be bad. Since Manuel Pellegrini actually rocked up at City, Manchester City have won more points than any other team in the Premier League. They've scored more goals than anyone in the Premier League. They've got more silverware than anyone in the Premier League. And they've won more games in the Premier League. For that point, Manuel, I'd like to say thank you. So we ask ourselves, was it actually right for Manuel Pellegrini to go? Well, I'd say yes. Why? Because we've got our man. I'd like to take this opportunity to say thanks, Manuel Pellegrini, and uh, all the best. Well, unless you're playing City, of course. These next comments aren't actually off YouTube. These are actually written by journalists. I do believe it could have been done in crayon and then typed up by their carer. Headlines like this. Pep Guardiola, a fraud. You're having a laugh. Pep Guardiola actually took over this Bayern Munich team and won the Bundesliga an unprecedented three times in three years. This is the absolute benchmark of domination, the bread and butter for a manager. His win ratio was 74.2%. Now, to put this into some kind of context, Alex Ferguson was 65%. Arsene Wenger, 58%. And Brendan Rodgers, <laughs> 35%. We all know that Pep Guardiola has had the stick of not actually winning the Champions League to beat him with. Well, the best team doesn't always win the Champions League. If you don't believe me, look at Chelsea and Liverpool. Bayern Munich absolutely battered Atletico Madrid, I feel, in the semi-final this year. They were set up tactically right and they looked great physically and mentally. But that's football. So I look forward to a City side set up in a similar kind of vein. Pep Guardiola is absolute box office. City will be set up tactically 100% bang on. And any player that's not actually willing to bleed for this shirt, hey, they'll be shown the door. Physically, we won't be found wanting in games. And mentally, I feel, we'll be a lot stronger. Let's get this right. There's not a team in England that wouldn't have actually rolled out the welcome mat for Pep. And we got him. Bayern were gutted to see him go. They say a team reflects his manager. Hey, and there's no better reflection than Pep Guardiola. <laughs> I think we've got a show of the week this week, folks. Lee, Newcastle United. Get back in League One. You will never be a big club. <laughs> you couldn't have sound that comment any worse, pal. Now, Lee, before I actually start to look at your statement, I'd just like to kick off and say, I do love the Geordies. Honest. Every time I've been up to Newcastle, or indeed they've been down to Manchester, I've always had a good skinful and a laugh with their fans. To actually come on our channel and a type, well, you're more than welcome, but to be spouting off that kind of drivel, well, it's silly and a bit embarrassing. Let's get this right, Lee. Manchester City were winning major trophies before Newcastle, and Newcastle haven't actually won a major English trophy since 1955. 
Now, since then, City have won the FA Cup three times, the top division, Premier League three times, and uh, indeed we've won the League Cup four times. Now, Lee, I don't know what constitutes a big club, but I actually logged on to the mag, Coda UK, and was uh, looking for a bit of information. Now, just before Kevin Keegan took over, your average attendance was 21,000. The season before that, your average attendance, 16,000. Lee, City were blowing that out of the water when they were in the third tier of English football. Lee, I might hear you ask, but that's all in the past. Well, this year, Lee, Manchester City actually ended up with higher attendances than, yeah, Newcastle. On top of this, Lee, Newcastle are actually a one-club city. We've had to contend with that lot in Trafford, but still, the Blue Faithful kept turning up. So, Lee, I think that City, with uh, attendances and trophy halls, nailed down. But what about spending power for the true size of a club? Well, Newcastle United's record signing was Michael Owen for £16 million. I don't know how many times City have broke that, but it's numerous. Lee, our owners have actually got massive ambitions. Mike Ashley, he's trying to bleed your club dry just to sell some more cheap tat at one of his retail stores. Lee, now don't get me wrong, I actually love the Geordie Nation, but don't come on here spouting nonsense and don't expect to get pulled up about it. Well, that about sums up another week of Walter's Glass Half Full. Now, if you've got any negative comments you need a bit of positivity injecting into, what are you waiting for? Get tapping below. Oh, time for another.